and the moon and the planets are there, and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. In the very early days of the space program, we had a lot of failures. It wasn't unusual to see an atlas come up off the pad and suddenly sink back down and explode and burn in its own wake. When we saw those things, and yes, we were used to seeing them, we began to think about what are we going to do in that situation when we have a man on top of it. When we started thinking about people who were going to fly our machines and decided to call them astronauts, then what qualities do you want in that human being? We immediately said we want test pilots. Brave men, courageous men, people who are willing to put their lives on the line every day. People who understood the frailties of decision making and engineering. became more complex. When you started doing rendezvous and complex orbital mechanics, you have to have a computer to aid man in making decisions on how to carry out the mission. When you try to reflect on any one particular thing that impressed you, that's very difficult, at least for me, to do because the whole thing was such a fantastic experience. There is no field of science, no field of technology, nothing that we see every day down here on the Earth that has not been touched by the results of the space program. Most people would say, well, you've done all this, what is there left to do? There will be factories in space. There will be all kinds of industry in space. It's almost mind-boggling. And the facts are we've just begun to scratch the surface. We're just getting there. I think it's more exciting than it's ever been. From the early unmanned missions to the space shuttle, IBM people and IBM computers have played an important part in every space flight. And even after 25 years and more than a trillion miles, the adventure has just begun.